Ten. Sam so Aiden, Tech Studio. Eight, seven. Six. Stomach five, Cover One, Mice four, One and Two. Three. Two. One. Tech Studio. Hello and welcome back to another episode of MCTV News. I'm your host, Matthias Kidd. And I'm Natalie Corey. On today's show, William Campo brings us to Hagen, Alberta Veterans Ranch. My co-host brings us the final piece of the CTS renovation featuring the Foods Lab. Sophia Shavoka invites us to join her at the Senior Boys Basketball Zones. Avery Pelche brings us to the Sturgeon County Cornhole League, and I took a closer look at how MCHS celebrates Ash Wednesday. As well, join us for an in-studio interview with 107.9 Morning Show host Justin Poitnier and learn about the day-to-day -day operations of his job. But first, here's our top story. During the Lent season, MCHS students were given the chance to aid fellow students in Kenya by raising money for certain fundraisers. The money raised is going to be used to, to buy brand new textbooks for those students. Reporter Aiden Chorney went to the recent bake sale to raise money for the movement and brings us this report. This Lenten season, MCHS is raising money for its sister school, Grapeyards Education Center. We are setting up events such as selling cupcakes and shamrock pretzels. The lead of this is Mrs. Sansano. She's the one organizing all of the baked goods sales and other programs that are raising money for Grape Yards Education Center. So I asked her why we are raising money. Why are we raising money? Um, it is part of our Lenten campaign as well as um, these students, there's 1,500 students at the school and they're in desperate need of textbooks and uh, that is why we're doing that. Are there any other foods you're going to sell? Uh, my grade nines tomorrow actually we're making shamrock pretzels and uh, the proceeds of that is going to obviously uh, our wonderful sister school the grapes yard education center in kenya how much money do you plan on raising uh, our goal is one thousand five hundred dollars are there any other ways you are planning on raising money what other events yes well today we had pie day so that was one event for student council put on a lot of bake sales that we're doing uh, we have parent teacher interviews coming uh, this thursday so we're also selling our shamrock pretzels and then uh, we also are uh, hopefully be able to do other events to raise money such as paint night which a group of staff members will be painting and uh, those proceeds will also go to this campaign how long do you plan on this event going for uh, we started on Ash Wednesday, so the beginning of Lent, and it's going on for 40 days, and that will end right before Good Friday, which is on April the 6th. Now with Lenten season coming to an end, we would like to thank all those who raised money for Grape Yards Education Center, for those who helped support the event by donating, and those who set it up by cooking the food. We are so grateful that you guys could all donate. Thank you. This is Aiden Chorney, signing off. Now that spring is in full effect, the weather is starting to warm up. Do we still need the winter coats and boots, or can we get into the shorts? Here to tell us is MCTV meteorologist Bree Farrell. Thank you. Uh, so, and so up in Whitehorse, we have uh, some rain and sun with at one degree. Uh, down in Vancouver, we have sun at nine degrees. Uh, and Yellowknife, we have some sun and clouds at negative two degrees. Uh, in Regina, we have some partly cloudy at it went negative, at, no, not negative, at plus uh, eight degrees. Sorry about that. Um, in Winnipeg, we have some partly cloudy at 15 degrees. And Toronto, we have very warm at uh, 26 degrees in the sun. Uh, up in Aqualite, we have some heavy snow at negative six. And Montreal, we have some uh, cloud and sun at 15. Uh, in Halifax, we have some uh rain and sun at nine and and st john we have some uh rain and shine with at nine degrees as well uh in high level up here we have uh eight degrees and partly cloudy in fort mcmurray we have uh seven degrees and showers uh in grand prairie we have uh some sunning clouds with some rain at 10 degrees in Edmonton, we have some partly cloudy at 11. In uh, Red Deer, we have a weird mix of sun, snow, and rain at 3 degrees. In Jasper, we have some sun and rain at 6 degrees. In Banff, we have some heavy snow at 3 degrees. 
In Calgary, we have su that same mix of sunshine and rain at 7 degrees. And in Medicine Hat, we have that uh, sun and rain at 9 degrees. Uh, yes? What? Okay. Uh, so in uh, Edmonton right now, we have uh, partly cloudy at 9 degrees with uh, wind at 17 uh, kilometers an hour uh, west. We have relative humidity about six, 61%. Uh, we have with sunrise starting at uh, 6.41 a.m. and sunset at 8.30 p.m. And for the seven-day forecast, we have a high of uh, 11 degrees and a, a minus of negative uh, 4 on Thursday with some partly cloudy. On Friday, we have uh, shine and rain uh, with a high of 11 degrees and a low of negative 2 degrees. On Saturday, we have uh, sun, thank God, um, with 13 degrees and a low of uh, minus 1. On Sunday, we have partly cloudy at 16 degrees and a low of 3 degrees. Um, Monday, we have some rain and showers with a high of 11 degrees and a low of 1 degree. Uh, at Tuesday, we have some partly cloudy skies with a high of 8 degrees and a low of minus 3 degrees. And on Wednesday, we have some uh, clouds with a high of 8 degrees and a low of minus 5 degrees. So definitely a warmer week. Thanks, Bree. Veterans around the country always need some time off. One place that some like to spend their free time is at Hoggins, Alberta Veteran Ranch. This ranch is especially helpful for retired soldiers to meet and bond with other veterans. William Campo takes us along to find out more about what this ranch consists of. Hoggins, Alberta Veterans Ranch allows veterans and their families to use a cabin free of charge. But how did the idea of this ranch form? I just noticed the government wasn't helping the veterans out enough or anybody for that matter. And I thought me and my volunteers could make a difference. And uh, I started up the page and woke up in the morning, I had over 500 members and it's kind of it in a nutshell. Along with cabins, there are plenty of other things provided at the ranch. Well, not only the veterans, but first responders are welcome here. Book in a date. Um, we supply all the food, showers, laundry. Um, we have a few vehicles they can drive in the back of the property. Um, we have a community fire pit in the back, mechanics bay, woodworking, fun chainsaws, trees, the, the, the back 40, we got 143 acres, the river running through it, so it's fishy, it's nature at its best in Carolina. The ranch hosts an annual archery shoot, which requires many volunteers. Uh, I discovered it last summer when uh, I found out about the 3D archery shoot. Um, just something to get away for a weekend and come and do some archery. And once I got here, I found out more about the ranch and what they provide for all the veterans and first responders in the area. Um, met a lot of really good people, got to help out and do a lot of things, and since then I've helped Ray and the crew here improve the, the camp in any way I can. The ranch brings many enjoyable aspects for guests and volunteers. What I like is it's a place for veterans and first responders to come and get away from all the normal stresses in life. Um, I've met some guys who came out here to help deal with their PTSD and other issues. So it, it's a chance for us to get away and get back to nature. Help out, build the camp, go fishing, go for walks in the woods, do whatever it is that will help us relax and de-stress and just enjoy life more. To reserve a spot at Hawk in Alberta, go to the Calgary Veterans Food Bank website. For MCTV News, Will Compo reporting. Here are your school announcements for Wednesday, April 12th. Attention students, please remember to bring in your registration sheets and have your parents complete the form on the PowerSchool parent portal these forms are needed ASAP to plan next year. Option courses are first come, first serve. Student volunteers are needed for an event held at the MCCCC on Wednesday, April 19th from 6 to 8 p.m. Sign-up sheet is on the cosmetology room door. See Ms. Sansano for more information. Attention high school art students. Are you interested in going to see the grad show and art studios at the U of A and McEwen? 
This is a first come, first served field trip as there's only 30 spots available. See Mrs. Rochopo for a permission sheet. Bike trip training rides commence this Saturday. Students must take three of the five training rides to be able to go on the trip. See Mr. Bartlestein for more information. For these and all of the school information, keep connected by listening in on the daily announcements, logging on to the school's website at www.mchs.gsaker.ab.ca or by following the school on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. As well, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by searching MCTV Morinville. The CTS area has recently undergone a full renovation to improve the students' experience during class. The new area now has a new classroom, a learning commons area, and a foods room to cook in. The kitchen expansion allows students to expand their cooking abilities. Here to tell us all about it is my co-host, Matthias Kidd. The foods class is a highly enjoyed program at MCHS. Students have created many foods and have expanded their knowledge of food. With the high demand and students wanting to participate in the class, a new foods room was part of the CTS renovations. This new room has been a hit for the new school with such a brand new modern touch to the school. Students now enjoy the class in a more spacious area. Things new in the foods room. Yeah, this is a brand brand new space. So, uh, yeah, uh, everything in here is brand new. But um, they made a lot of improvements from the prior years, and uh, it's a lot more easy to cook in there. With the equipment is fantastic in the foods room. Um, it's top high end equipment it's like wolf ovens, a big pizza oven. Um, Confection oven. I think Mr. Sorta has an ice cream maker in there. Like it's top notch. Like have a double deck pizza oven. Um, we have a ice cream machine, a blast chiller, a standalone grilling station, and each uh, individual workstation is equipped with a gas wolf range uh, oven. Our students are working on cooking, absolutely. We didn't have enough space in the old um, kitchen, so this one allows for more groups of students working on 10 different um, stations, so more can cook at a, at a single time, which is fantastic. Opportunities uh, that students wouldn't have had, obviously uh, the, the opportunity to work with some of the new equipment that uh, wasn't available in the old food studies room, so that means playing around, experimenting, trying recipes that uh, we haven't been able to do before because we haven't had the equipment to do them on. With such a modern space, what do students love about the new foods room? The knife rack makes it very easy. Yes, they, they, uh, I, I think students love trying their, their own food, right? Seeing what they can do and what they, they can come up with and, and uh, having the opportunity to sort of be creative that way. With that, the new food room is deemed to be a grand slam for the school and should attract lots of attention. The class will keep growing and become a hit for every class. For MCTV News, Matthias Kidd. Welcome back. Here with all the latest news in the sports world, including last night's score in the NHL, NBA, and MLB, is our very own sports reporter, Sophia Shvoka. Thanks, Natalie. It was quite the eventful night in the NHL as teams are making their final push for playoff spots. The Edmonton Oilers pulled a last-minute win during overtime as Evan Bouchard scored against the Avalanche, ending the game 2-1. The Golden Knights won 4-1 against the Seattle Kraken, putting them in first place in the Pacific Division. The Leafs were victorious against Tampa Bay. The final score was 4-3. The Jets took a 3-1 victory against the Minnesota Wild, securing the last spot in the Western Conference. And the Blackhawks beat the Penguins 5-2 and making the playoffs seem painstakingly further away for the Penguins fans. In the NBA, playoffs are beginning and the play-in tournament concludes this evening. Last night, the Hawks survived the Heat, winning 116-105, to and the Lakers drowned the Timberwolves 108-102. to Tonight, the Chicago Bulls play the Toronto Raptors, and the Oklahoma City Thunder plays the New Orleans Pelicans. All of these teams are hoping to secure their spots going into playoffs. Turning to the MLB, the Toronto Blue Jays attacked the Tigers, winning 9-3. The San Diego Padres beat the New York Mets 4-2. The Tampa Bay Rays melted the Boston Red Sox with a 7-2 victory. The Los Angeles Angels beat the Washington Nationals 2-1. And tonight, the Milwaukee Brewers play the Arizona Diamondbacks. Ash Wednesday took place on February 22nd. It's a holy day of prayer and fasting that is observed by the Catholic Church. Here at MCHS, we held an Ash Wednesday ceremony and reflected on why Ash Wednesday is so important. Here to tell us more is reporter Natalie Corey. Ash Wednesday is one of the most important days in the Catholic Church. It's a reminder to grow closer to God and strengthen your relationship with Him. 
Many Catholics deem it as one of the most important days to celebrate in the Catholic religion. It's a representation of our mortality and all that we have been blessed with by the Lord. So Ash Wednesday is the day that begins the 40-day um, adventure, if you can call it, that, and then we find uh, Jesus dying on the cross and dying for our salvation. For me, it's thinking about church and what God means to me and how I can be respectful and come back to more prayer. Ash Wednesday means penance and mortality to me. There are many ways to celebrate Ash Wednesday. They can range from actions as simple as attending Mass on important days throughout the Lenten season to fasting for the entirety of Lent. There are three things uh, where we are reminded. It's, uh, three important spiritual tools it's called uh, uh, fasting, prayer, and arms giving. I guess for Ash Wednesday, show up to a celebration or a ceremony and get the ashes done and listen to like the prayers. I feel like everyone can participate by just sacrificing something. Maybe the most common answer would be electronics, like phones, of course, or maybe fasting if you're 18 and above. Ash Wednesday is deemed one of the most important days in the Catholic faith. It marks the start of the 40 days and nights of fasting, almsgiving, and prayer. It's a time for reflection on one's faith and how one can grow closer to God. I think it's important to celebrate Ash Wednesday because it recenters just you with who you are. And for me as a Christian, I think that it's very important to have these type of celebrations or these somber days that remind us that throughout, of our, throughout our lives, you're still a part of God and it's something you have to think about. It's the most important because that is when Jesus uh, dies for us. It's a, it's a new beginning for all of us. This important day is one to remember to take part of every year, to reflect on our faith and our religion. Some easy ways to participate are to attend local masses, to receive the ashes, to give something up for Lent, to give more to others, and to pray. This time is often used to reflect on one's relationship with their religion. For MCTV News, Natalie Corey reporting. Welcome back. Over the years, MCTV has cultivated many students that have entered the TV and radio industries. We are pleased to have one of such MCTV alumnus in studio with us today, Justin Potnier, who has been in the radio for, who's been in radio for the past 16 years and is currently working in Fort Saskatchewan as Mix 107.9's morning host. So hi, Justin. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to be back. Yeah, that's great to have you, to have you here today. So my first question for you is, uh, what made you interested in the TV and radio industry? Well, actually, yeah, since I was a little kid, probably, I don't know, probably seven, eight years old, I would listen to the radio constantly, all different stations, all different styles, talk radio, and it was just something I really liked and thought, well, maybe I could make a career out of this one day. It just goes to kind of come to fruition that MCHS comes to be, which was uh, a fairly new school at the time. I believe it opened 95, 96, somewhere in there. And uh, just living across the street, saw I go up, heard the rumors that there was going to be a TV studio in there, worked my way through Primo, eventually got to MCHS, and here, uh, working with MCHS and, uh, and all that comes with it is what really kind of cultivated my love for uh, television and radio and what helped put me into the industry. Uh, how did MCTV affect your career? Uh, it started everything. I would, I would say because nobody, uh, at least back in, in the days when I went to high school, nobody had the kind of education in, in TV, radio, and probably any media that we had here at MCHS. It was truly the best in the province, maybe one of the best in Canada. And it really helped to you know, take, the, take the facade off of radio and television and I could kind of dig into the nuts and bolts of it and see what work needed to be done to actually have a career in the industry. And to get like real world experience right here in school, um, it was invaluable. It really started everything for me. Uh, what's your favorite MCTV memory? Oh, there's lots. Uh, I, think, I think probably winning nationals twice with, uh, with Skills Canada was probably the, the two biggest moments. Um, it, it was something tremendously fun both times. There, there's so many memories over the year. I mean, we could, we could do a two-hour retrospective on just my years in MCTV, but uh, those are two that definitely stick out. And of course, you know, just being able to, to be with friends and, and to be with folks that uh, really had kind of a like mind in school and, and uh, to be able to produce pieces and, and do everything that we did, it just, it's memories that still live on to this day for sure. How does the MCTV environment compare to re a real-life radio station atmosphere? 
Um, I would say that there's a lot of things that are very similar. Um, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of planning that goes into your guys' show. Obviously, there's a lot of planning that goes into my show every day. Um, obviously, the things are very heavy uh, here on the television side of things, and I'm um, in the radio side of things. So there's slight differences, obviously, but uh, just the planning ahead, the knowing what would be interesting to an audience, the um, the technical side of things definitely helps learning to edit, learning to write, learning to produce things uh, to a completed product. That's definitely very similar. The timeline shrinks in, in real life. Um, so we're doing things hour by hour, minute by minute. Here it gets stretched out a little bit because obviously you guys are in school. So you, know, you can only take so much of your time to do it. Uh, but that is the only thing the timeline shrinks. But a lot of the skills kind of started right here. What do you love most about your job? Ooh. I just love the excitement of, of live anything. Live radio, live television, it's, it's awesome. I've gotten to meet some of my musical heroes over the years, got to interview cool people. No two days are ever the same in radio, or at least it, it, what I do uh, with uh, you know, having a morning show. Every day is different, topics are different every single day. Um, so I guess waking up and actually like going to your job, you know, is something that a lot of people unfortunately don't have, but I'm lucky to have had it for my entire adult life for the most part. What advice would you give to anyone wanting to get into the radio and television industry? I would say, and I hope this doesn't come off wrong, but I would say be very cautious about if it's actually what you want to do because there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into it. It's a very different lifestyle that goes into it. Um, there's a lot of times that you need to be uh, moving away from city to city. I, I've lived in three different provinces in six or seven different towns. That, those those kind of things happen. Um, it can be a difficult industry at times, but like I said, no two days are the same and uh, it can be really fun. I would say you have to be a curious person. You have to always be wanting to learn something, wanting to soak things up like a sponge. If you're that kind of person, then I think that the industry can be for you. There's fewer and fewer jobs, unfortunately, in the industry, but um, if you work hard enough, if you're determined enough, there will be a spot for you in whatever capacity you're looking for. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for your time here today. Thank you for having me. Coming up next, the Sturgeon County Cornhole League starts their spring season tonight, and our very own reporter, Avery Pelche, tosses herself into action. Cornhole has long been known as a backyard sport. But when the winter weather leaves our lawns entirely out of commission, some are finding another way to get their fix. Sturgeon County Cornhole is a local league founded by two brothers-in-law who decided to turn a seven-year-long hobby into something more. Went to a couple of tournaments with uh, Jason and uh, we did pretty good at them actually. So I started looking around after that, trying to find anything in the area, like uh, an existing league that we could join. Uh, our choices were a little bit limited for that kind of thing, so we decided the best way to go ahead would be to start our own league in Morinville and Sturgeon. We call cornhole the most inclusive sport uh, in, in Canada. It's the fastest growing, most inclusive sport. Uh, you know, pretty much anybody can play. We have people of all ages, you know, diff differing abilities, uh, you know, di differing levels of physical fitness. Uh, when we started our first season in the fall, uh, we were averaging probably about 20 people every night. Uh, this season that we're into is the middle of our winter season now and we've been averaging closer to 30, 30 plus even. The league has proved a tremendous success so far, drawing in new and returning players each week from Mournville, Edmonton, Redwater, Legal, Andrew, Fort Saskatchewan, Smoky Lake, St. Albert, Bonacord, and Sturgeon County. I'm an avid player. I just love the sport. It's, uh, it's challenging every single night you show up. There's new people. I just, <laughs> the addiction is real. You just get, you start getting better and you get a little bit of a competitive edge and you just want to keep coming back. The, the community here is super friendly, super great. Uh, the competition is nice, but you know we have new new players coming all the time. It's just uh, it's just great. The format of our league allows for more experienced players to play with less experienced players, so it makes it fun for everybody involved. It's so fun, and everybody who comes, who tries it for the first time, loves it, and they're hooked. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's going to just keep keep growing like crazy. Whether you're a seasoned tournament goer or an eager novice, you're sure to end your night having met some new people 
and maybe with a little cash too. The SEC holds league nights every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. at the Fable Gardens Hall in Mournville. Be sure to register online using the Scoreholio app and check out their social medias at Sturgeon County Cornhole. For MCTV News, I'm Avery Pelche, reporting. This year, our senior boys basketball team did extremely well. Their season was capped off with MCHS hosting the Zone Tournament. Despite the incredible competition displayed by rival squads, the Senior Wolves were able to win it all with the ho to hoist the no North Central Zone banner once again and earned a spot at Provincials. Sophia Shavoka was there to catch all the action and brings us this report. The annual Senior Boys Basketball Zones were held at MCHS this year. Zones is extremely important to the success of teams in the division. Zones is the final tournament for the year and it decides who goes to the provincial champions. Zones is a uh, end of the year tournament for all the uh, division teams from your school division I guess and the winner of it moves on to provincials. Zones like end of the year, it's like the NCAA tournament, it's really big, really fun. Although Zones may seem like a normal tournament, it means something else for the teams who participate. So it's last of the year, last run for the grade 12s. They really usually step up to the plate and do good. If you lose its zones, you're done for the year. That's the end of your season. That's uh, it's the big one of the year. You practice all year, you train all year for this tournament. Well, it's the end of the year. Grade 12s are more hyped up because if you lose, you're kind of it's kind of your last uh, high school tournament, right? In any tournament, there's a multitude of things to take away from the experience, especially at zones. I take away the camaraderie, the way everybody stepped up and how we just came together at the right time. It was uh, it was really amazing to see. Just memories, all memories. <laughs> yeah, the memories, like I can recall from my high school years, all the zones we've been to, pre almost every game that we've played in, all the highlights from every game. Tournaments and competition in general are very beneficial to the growth of players and coaches. I do think it's important because um, it doesn't just teach you sports, it teaches you how to work hard, how to work with others, and that can help kids in the future. I absolutely believe competing is important, right? There's, uh, you face adversity, uh, you face many challenges, success, failure, all of those teach life lessons that you can take anywhere uh, in anything you do. Tournaments, yeah, it just pulls the competitiveness out of people, because in order to move on, you have to win every game, right? And those kids who are usually more competitive end up going further. With high stakes games, extremely close point counts, and a hometown win, the Senior Boys Zones Basketball Tournament could not have gone any better. For MCTV News, Sophia Shavoka reporting. And that's it for another episode of MCTV News. Join us again where we will bring you an inside look at Student Council, the one year anniversary of local salon courts in Maine, how the school celebrated Pi Day, one of our two skills teams videos, and two exposés on new teachers who, have, who are new here at MCHS, Mr. King and Miss Warner, as well as the weekly weather update and sports recap coming up on April 19th. So skills is coming up this weekend. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, from all of us here at MCTV, uh, we just wanted to uh, wish the best of luck to uh, all those competing in Cosmo and uh, construction and, uh, you know, computer sciences and all. Yeah, and here at MCTV with Sophia and Brielle and Ella and Jillian. Yeah, so uh, we just wanted to uh, wish you all the best of luck. From all of us at MCTV News, I'm Natalie Corey. And I'm Matthias Kidd. Thanks for tuning in. You stay classy, MCHS.